Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Here we've got a couple of big targets who will try to be key contributors in both the pass and run games today. It's Austin Hooper's Falcons going up against Safarian Jenkins' Jets. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford. We are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go. And it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with the Atlanta Falcons. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Here's the Jets' new kicker for 2017, Chandler Catanzaro, and we are underway from MetLife Stadium. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Offense coming out for the Atlanta Falcons, who dropped their second game of the season. Upset loss against Miami. That was at home, Charles. You get a look at Matt Ryan. Had his guys up 17 zip at half, but zero points over their final five drives. That has to be an absolute crusher to them because... It brings in memories of the Super Bowl uh, loss you went against there. New England, right? <laughs> yeah. Where they had everything under I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> up big and find a way to give that game away. So that's something they're going to have to continue to fight against and try and conquer those demons. And by the way, you know they play this upcoming week? Who? The New England Patriots in New England. Chance for revenge. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. As you and I both know, one reason team script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one there? <laughs> no, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards there on the carry. Gets it back to second and 11. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They go again with Powell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. I can never stump you on stats, but go ahead and let the people know. Who was second in the NFL 2016 in yards per carry? It was that man, Bilal Powell, right at five and a half. He may have had to share some carries in the backfield with Matt Forte, but boy, he took advantage of his touches. Green, 39. Green. Throwing his McCown on third down. 
Curley's got it complete. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. Yeah, we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got the turnover. <laughs> we appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Fresh set of downs here. Working from the gun, McCown, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Ten yards still left on second down. From the gun, it's McCown. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. They'll run. This is Powell. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Second down, here's McCown. That is incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Six plays got him down here. This is play number seven, third and goal. Let's go! Here's McCown to throw, and he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Jermaine Kurz, a seven-yard touchdown grab, and the Jets have taken a first-quarter lead. This is similar to baseball, where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a Jet touchdown. Captain Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 
Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. They go play action here on first down. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So here we go, first and ten now. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And that'll bring up second down. All right, let's look at the offense. Devontae Freeman, this is a guy that you wanted to talk about, so take it away. Brandon, have you seen a running back play with such joy as well as such fury? I love the way he runs the football and attacks defenses. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. This defense is well-respected around the league, and in 2015, they were ranked fourth overall in total defense. You move ahead to what they did last year, it looks pretty good on paper. 11th overall, just outside the top 10, but that collection of talent didn't pay off in the wins column. The team went 5-11, and 11, and they're looking to get all these pieces together and put this talent back on display. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A Falcon first down. Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Second down, Freeman. And a big tackle there as the defender runs right through him. Around 37. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. 
And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Julio back-to-back all-pro seasons. Last year, over 1,400 yards. Averaged over 100 yards per game. Tops in the NFL. And that's the stat that catches my eye. Over 100 yards per game. And you always hear about defenses saying, we can rotate, we can send people in this direction, we can do things to limit a wide receiver. Yet Julio Jones averages over 100 per game. One of the most sensational stats I've seen in recent football. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll be a second down. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see, second and nine. handoff it's Freeman and he's got this one down to the 10 and he's able to get most of what's on the gain and it's third and two now this drive is turning into an extended one and and the guy carrying the ball he's becoming more like a body blows guy every carry is putting some damage on the defense so after a while I'm not too sure how many guys gonna want to run up and tackle him play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two Zone for a Falcon touchdown. Eric Sober from 10 yards out. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. to give to Powell, now McCown. And his throw is incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And now it's second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. 
From the gun on third, McCown. And that is incomplete. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. And that's okay. They just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Wasn't able to get anything, no gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it. And that's exactly what he tried to do on that play. But it didn't gain him any yardage. Freeman again. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little gain. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. The offense on third down tonight, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're looking at third and a few inches. They go play action now. Ryan. And he's got Sanu. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. This is Freeman on first and ten. Uses the spin. Fighting through, and he's got space. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second down, Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take this one down to the 20-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. So the offense has it first and 10. Right, 
The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And now running right through him. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down following the run. They will run again with Coleman. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run, worked out well. The Falcons on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Ryan now off the bootleg. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Now the defense definitely showing blitz here. Ryan keeps himself upright, shrugs him off. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Now Ryan on second down. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. And we will return to MetLife Stadium after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. The offense on third down, no problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This is third and goal. Again, Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Taylor Gabriel from four yards out. And the Falcons have taken the lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Jets' offense gets ready to head back on the field. feet in second down and fans a quick reminder from the NFL after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer and you can learn more about the expanded crucial catch initiative and access the defender a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash crucial catch and I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because Cancer affects us all in many different ways, and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support. We always talk about how important speed is in the game of football. Deion Jones may be an undersized middle linebacker, but his speed allows him to get to just about anywhere on the field and make a play. And between he and Keanu Neal, the Falcons took the top two spots in the NFL in terms of rookie tacklers a season ago. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. It's taken to the 26. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Partner, our parents always told us that relationships were going to be important in life. Taylor Gabriel knew Kyle Shanahan in Cleveland before he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Boy, that payoff for the Falcons picking him up. Yeah, last year he had more touchdowns, actually, than Julio Jones. He had seven. Jones had six. And good parental advice there, Mr. Davis. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. This one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. And 
And now a 10th carry for Freeman. He'll get this to the 40. Sweet little juke in there. Got him some extra yardage. It looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Falcons on third down. Can't be any better than a perfect six for six. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Ryan connects with Sanu right side. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Ryan to Sanu, good for an Atlanta first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more here as they've got it first and 10. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. On second down, here's Ryan. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Falcons on third down. They haven't been stopped yet. A perfect seven for seven. This time it's third and three. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. <laughs> And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. So many things going to making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start, and then a nice tackle to finish things off. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to It's good to be the kicker for the top offense in the NFL, and Matt Bryant was that in 2016. Led the league in scoring with 158 points. But boy, does Atlanta find him valuable. So dependable and clutch. And he's been valuable in this league for a while. Hard to believe he's been around since 2002. Here's Bosher to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So out now come the Jets. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They start this with a run for Powell. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now.
McCown to throw on second down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. <laughs> and now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That yeah, was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. And now a first down following that long game. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Deion Jones. In from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Second down, Forte. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. It's a gain of five, but they're still deep in a hole. 15 yards still to go on third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 15. Green, 39. Green, From the gun, it's McCown. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Give him nine on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. This will be off the right upright, but he banks it in. A high degree of difficulty there, but he gets it to go. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So maybe not the smoothest attempt you'll ever see, Charles, but he sliced it in off the uprights, and it's three points all the same. Hey, they don't give you four if it's right down the middle. Like you say, the ball was slicing pretty sharply, but he got it to bank in, and that's all that matters. the made field goal, Cat and Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. Andre Roberts now to return it. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. his way forward to about the 32. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Right. 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 
Looking to throw on second down. Ryan gets it off to Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight, now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. A swift move, but not a ton to show for it. Tackle just on the other side of midfield. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. The Falcons on third down. They've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. This is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Matt Bosher, seventh-year man from Miami, on to punt as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And now out come the Jets. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They begin with a carry for Powell. Showed some strong running, but quickly corralled just beyond the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to MetLife Stadium after this short timeout. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Here's McCown to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrowing balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. The Jets on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and nine. Here's McCown. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And out will come the offense as they take over. down. Room to run inside the 40. Wide open receiver complete. 18 yards the gain for number 18. It's Ryan. It's caught over the middle. Hooper. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts, as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. remaining here on second down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Three five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, 
It can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown. But I guess he's got to wait to try to pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. The Falcons on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing again, Ryan. And it's complete, Hooper. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Austin Hooper, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Falcons will extend their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. And the lead is up to 14. Five plays there on that drive. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And the Jets set to take the field. Uh, I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> On first and ten, here's McCown. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Working from the gun, McCown. And that is caught by Ardarius Stewart. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Shotgun here for McCown. 
Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. A gain of six there on first. McCown looks to throw again. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. And Catton Zero's kick is right through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dip into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board. And that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be. And that's in the lead. After the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. This will be fielded at the six. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Jets trail at home at halftime. The Falcons have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's do it. Here's a look at the first half highlights. Now following the fumble, McCown's on target here. He caps off the seventh play drive with a score as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Falcons with the football midway through the first. Ryan's got the completion here, and that goes as a 10-yard touchdown. Falcons tie it up at 7. Falcons come out on third and four. Matt Ryan on the connection with Taylor Gabriel, and it ends up working for a touchdown. That takes the lead up to 7. Falcons have it late in the first half. Hooper is wide open, able to make the grab. And this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. Okay, Larry, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Faking the give to Powell, now McCown. 
He's going to let this one go deep. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Robert Alford. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. now. These guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. After the interception, here's Ryan. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. So the chain gang now done for the drive. Ball on the 10, first and goal. Here's Ryan. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. It's a give to Freeman running right. The nice footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. <laughs> They've thrown for three touchdown passes. Now here, I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so. But ordinarily, second down is when you run your play fake, your play action, show run, and throw the ball. Now they brought up third down. They'll have to throw it anyway. Drops it off for Coleman. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And that will extend their lead even further. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. They start the drive with a give to Powell. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, this is the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, here's McCown. It's caught on the left side by Kurz. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. All right, here we go. On third down, it's Powell. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. That was a terrific job by the defense stopping him on third and short, but sometimes you get some visual cues from the offense because when they're going in short yard situations, you might see the offensive line come in tighter together, a little more shoulder to shoulder, trying to wedge a hole in the middle. They didn't get it done on that play. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. now coming out on the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, is it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They'll try to get the ground game going with Freeman. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big-time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Ryan now off the bootleg. Looking sideline incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, look credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. On third and one, Ryan. It's caught, Jones. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. A phrase we said a lot last year, Ryan to Jones for a Falcon first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? 
Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. That pass going awry gives me a second to fit in a stat that you told me. The three worst rushing offenses in the NFL this past week, Charles, all had 100-yard runners, and they all got a win. Yeah, how about the motivation for a couple of them, too? Adrian Peterson going to the Cardinals, he had a lot to prove, didn't he? He wanted to let everyone know that he still had the juice, and he ran all over Tampa Bay. How about Miami going into Atlanta and upsetting the Falcons, and Jay Ajayi got back on track. But did you have Orleans Darkwa <laughs> of the Giants putting a 100 spot on the Denver Broncos I in Denver I would be and lying. winning? I did not have that. You did that. not have no. that. Just think, all three of them won their game. Yeah, if you run the football in the league, you've got a chance to be successful. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Ryan. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. McCown going to hand this one off to Powell. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. See if they stay on the ground for second down. McCown looking to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The Jets on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. Now is McCown. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth.
Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he fields it cleanly. He'll be hard-pressed to match that one. That a 65-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. On second down, Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Now Freeman, he's been busy today. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On second down, here's Ryan. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Muhammad Wilkerson in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> And here comes play number six on this drive. Three, 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 three. 
A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And he's going to go down again. Demario Davis in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the shotgun, Ryan. And that is incomplete. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And New York set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. This is the running back, Powell. And he'll be knocked down sideways at the 18-yard line. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. McCown throwing on second. Safarian Jenkins has it. And down he'll go at the 25. Eight yards into completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Jets on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. From the gun, it's McCown. And able to find Curley. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Jet football, but they trail here as we start the fourth quarter. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. from the gun, McCown. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. lining up first and ten. Green 39. Green 39. 
Now McCown. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. And a first down screen pass, good for five. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. From midfield, here's McCown. And going over the middle here to Curley. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Fresh set of downs here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. McCown now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Here we go now. Boom, landing. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. The Jets on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and seven. Green, 39. Green, 39. Shotgun here for McCown. Drops it underneath to Forte. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now McCown got to have this one. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 21 that time. And that's good for a Jet first down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. The stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 11 more on that one, and another first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. The offense operating inside the 10 at the 8 here. It's first and goal. All right, here we go. 56. Blue 90. 56. Blue 90. They'll try to run with Forte. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. 
So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. All right, here we go. Boom, landed. Ah! Again, Forte. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. Forte. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. This defense bending but not breaking. It's a gain of three. It's now fourth and goal. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So a 15-play drive. Can't believe that only resulted in three, but it did. That is somewhat amazing, isn't it? When you hold the ball that long, run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? Has to. To the main field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26 yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Freeman at tailback. He's got it running left. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for him. They've got the advantage. So I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> it's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave them with third and still seven yards to go. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? You just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. On third down, Ryan. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, 
Look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. And being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Collision there. He's hit and knocked backward at the six yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. From the gun on third, McCown. Found his target, it's Anderson. And he gets this one up just shy of the 35 to the 34. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Here we go now. 3 19. On first down, McCown caught Safarian Jenkins right side. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. Second down now after the pass completion. To throw, it's McCown. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And they'll be at the 18-yard line. Great field position here in the red zone. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Following 
following the fumble recovery. It's Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Second down here after the incomplete pass. A 20th carry now for Freeman. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. They'll run here with Freeman. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. They'll come out in the pistol. Offense working with a second and goal now from the three. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Line of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. They come out with one back and three tight ends. On third down, that's Coleman. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Bryant's kick is good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. 
but three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. Here's Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> All right, here we go. McCown now on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. From his own end zone, it's McCown. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard at the 13-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. On third and long, it's McCown. Completes it to Matt Forte. And he gets this one up just shy of the 35 to the 34. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Throwing now is McCown. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, And it's second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Back to the air on second down. McCown, pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Brooks Reed in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. McCown going to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, yeah, exactly right. Atlanta now coming out on the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. 
So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. Ryan heads down to a knee, and that should wrap this one up. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long, everybody.